Uh, my name is Norman Vitas, and I'm playing the role of Mac. Mac, and will you describe Mac's character? She's, uh, <coughs> Mac, his character. Uh, he uh, makes crystal meth. He's a sex freak. He's a rapist. He's a murderer. Um, he is the brother. He is the son. He uh, is the bad guy. And what did, what attracted you to this role? Well, well, I got the script um, and um, I got the offer of the film, and my agents read it <coughs> at the same time as I read it, and they. Uh, the next morning, my agent, Rachel, she calls and she goes, she goes, did you read that? And I go, and she goes, that's the sickest fucking script I've ever read in my life. And I go, yeah, right? And she goes, what do you think? And I go, let's do it. So I liked how it sort of went for it. I mean, like every film, I, I pretty much uh, kill somebody. But this like, this one was really, really rough. It reminds me sort of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Thank you, Mary. And that's one of my favorite films. So that's what one of my first films, I did a, I did a role in that film that was uh, pretty heavy and it sort of co coincided with what was happening in my life at the time. And uh, I was kind of like, oh. What was, what was that film? Uh, the film was called Floating. And there was a part of that film where <clears throat> the, uh, the father in the film is in a, in a car crash and he's in a wheelchair and the mother's gone. and. And I'm at that age where I have to leave uh, okay, leave uh, my father. And my real father was in a wheelchair at the time. And he's since passed on. But the director came up right before that scene. And he, he says, how do you want to prepare for this scene? And in that scene, the father was himself out on the patio and stands up out of the chair and gives me a hug. And it's a big deal in the film. And, and uh, so I said, give me a phone. And I, and I called my dad and had a real conversation. And, just, you know, nonchalant conversation, and then uh, they came and they got me. We did it twice, and the first time I cried so much, so much snot came out of my nose that they couldn't use it. But then the second time, uh, we broke for lunch after that, and I went to my little trailer and took a nap. And <clears throat> and after lunch, which I didn't go to, I mean, we shot in Maine, so we shot, you know, we ate lunch in this tent, you know, with heaters and all this crap. And, and uh, when I came out of the trailer, this grip comes up and goes, can I, can I tell you something? I said, yeah, he goes, he goes, you didn't go to lunch, but I want to tell you, because nobody touched their food and nobody spoke. And I was kind of like, oh, that's, that's what you can do with this shit. And I very rarely felt that sense or anything close to that. Um, because you're always kind of looking to do that again, you know, or feel you that again. And uh, how to break into it. I, I got drunk at a party. I yelled at a bunch of people. And the lady came up and said, hey, you, you want to be an actor? I said, she goes, my friend uh, kind of had the hots for her, and we ended up having pizza. She asked me to be in a play. Uh, I met the lady who was doing the play, and somebody spotted me in the play and started sending me a movie. So I booked a movie and kept going. So I thought I'd done. Uh, uh, the director, he'll, you know, say, "What are you gonna do?" And I'm like, "I don't know." And then they go, "Okay." What are you gonna do? I don't know. Just watch and see what happens. See what happens. And sometimes you work with a director, and they like they really like kind of fine tune you, um, which I, which is nice. Actors like to be fine tuned. I think, you know? How is it wor working with Giovanni? He's good. I like him. I like I like I like his his vision on things. He's he, he's not afraid of anything, which is really really cool. He, he, he definitely. Like, I mean, he's. It's got to be hard to be the director because you're like the quarterback of like four teams at once. You know what I mean? And, and we all look to the quarterback for the answers. We all want to ask questions. We all want to have answers. And you can tell if you ask somebody and they don't have an answer, and even if they make one up, you know that it's not their answer. And he seems to have his answers when you ask him questions for all the teams. So I think everyone believes in him. You know what I mean? Everyone, everyone knows he knows what he's doing, which is... Uh, it's not always the case.